Hi there and welcome to the second of my weekly wraps where I share my reading for pleasure, my reading for class and also my latest book haul from the library although this week's book haul is different, it was purchased. Okay, let's start with my reading for pleasure this week. So firstly I finished this novel, Kobo Abe's The Boxman and on the question of pleasure it's rather interesting because when I'd finished it I felt rather as if I'd been tricked into reading what amounts to an extended pornographic fantasy and I derived little pleasure from it at all. It's far easier to imagine Kobo Abe watching you read his book through a two-way mirror, pleasuring himself and laughing at you as you did so. Okay, moving swiftly on. The remainder of my reading for pleasure this week was short stories by two writers, the first of whom is André Morat, a French man of letters, born in the late 19th century, a noted biographer and novelist. He does admit in his introduction that his own short stories do not come up to the level of those of Catherine Mansfield, whom I'm going to talk about in this video a little later. And this brutal piece of self-assessment is rather borne out by the evidence. I read two short stories and they were solid but unspectacular. However, the next writer I'm going to talk about, it's a completely different story, so to speak. I continued my steady progress through this collection, Luigi Perendello short stories this week, reading seven of his tales, and oh my goodness, I stumbled into a string of absolute masterpieces, slices of psychological drama that were utterly compelling, humorous on occasion too, it must be said. My favourite was Bitter Waters. I'll link to this collection in the description below. If you haven't read any Pirandello, I strongly urge you to do so and actually it's rather sad that I was interleaving these tales with those of Catherine Mansfield and I have to say Catherine Mansfield constitutes a footnote in literary history compared to the scale of Pirandello's achievement. It really is that good. Phenomenal work. Okay with that said let's move on to my reading for class. I read absolutely nothing for my class on nihilism this week as the professor was sick. Hopefully he makes a rapid recovery. In my other class readings in British and American literary history, we continued making our way through Shakespeare's The Winter's Tale and we watched a 2018 Globe production of this play which I thoroughly recommend. Link in the description below. The other reading for this class was my own. It's my research for my prospective term paper which will be on the New Zealand writer Catherine Mansfield. Now Catherine Mansfield published three short story collections during her sadly very short life, the first of which was In a German Pension in 1911, which I've already reviewed for the channel, review number three, but this week I read her second collection published in 1920, Bliss, and I read it in here, her collected stories, and I have to say it was rather disappointing. None of the tales really stood out, none of them surpassed the best of those in her first collection. Then I also read the first chapter of Claire Tomalin's Catherine Mansfield, A Secret Life, an excellent biography. This first chapter really just emphasises the mutability of Catherine's character, which came out in her correspondence, where she used a vast assortment of names when interacting with different parties. Her wealth and also her strong urge to be a writer from an early age, which interestingly seems to have been prompted by the literary success of her cousin, Elizabeth von Arnim, whom I'm also a keen admirer of. Okay, there's all my reading for class. Now it's time for my book haul, and then I shall bid you farewell. So all of these books came from a tour of Taipei City's used bookstores, and we start with two novels by Kazuo Ishiguro, The Remains of the Day and never let me go. Both of them hugely successful of course. Now, I have to admit I don't really like the work of this writer. So Jason, why buy his books? The answer is my PhD project involves a critique of writers like Ishiguro, practitioners of the so-called world novel. So it's rather a case here of knowing one's enemy as it were. Next however, an old friend. It's Charlotte Bronte Shirley. I now have all of the Bronte sisters novels here with me. I can get on with reading and reviewing them for the channel. Absolutely adore their work. Next, Hemingway, 
Hemingway in Paris. I have another book in this series from this publisher, Young Hemingway, which was excellent. And he's just one of those writers where reading about his life is as interesting as reading his work. I can't wait to get into that. Next up, we have Tennyson, the major works, looking absolutely amazing there, like he could join the Beatles during their psychedelic period. I'm a big fan of his narrative poetry, and actually, I already have this Penguin Classics selected poems, so it's more a case of seeing if there's some stuff in this new one that's not in there. Then, Ovid, The Metamorphoses. We all have embarrassing gaps in our reading, and for me, it's a lot of this classical literature. I'm 50 years old, but I'm yet to read a single word of The Metamorphoses. I'm going to put that right forthwith. Then, a collection by a poet that, again, I'm not hugely interested in. It's for my readings in British and American literary history class. Emily Dickinson, I know, I know, so many of you admire the technical perfection of her works, but as I just mentioned with reference to Tennyson, my primary interest is narrative poetry, of which she produced, well, absolutely none, I believe. Then we have Willa Cather, My Antonia. I like the cover here. That's just beautiful. I have a few of her novels on the shelf that I'm yet to get around to reading. Hopefully there'll be time for that this year. And to finish with, we have two works of literary theory. Firstly, I found, wow, another back team book, Conversations and Dialogues, sorry, Essays and Dialogues on his work, yet to even skim this, but that will come later. And finally, the Italian polymath much missed, Umberto Eco, with a work of semiotics, which is part of this reader response criticism. The idea that there are essentially infinite readings of a text, with each of us creating one of our own each time we crack open a book and begin reading. Again, I've yet to really take a look at this. That's for later. So there we have it. How was your reading week? Please let me know in the comments below. Any thoughts on what I've shared with you? Again, I'd love to hear them. But for now, it's time to bid you farewell. As I promised, be safe, be strong, and I shall see you anon. Nanu Nanu.